Pleasure to welcome back to the podcast, Notre Dame starting goalie, Liam Entman. Liam, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. I always love repeat guests, man. It's great. We could do this again. Uh, we haven't, we haven't chatted in a good year and a half and uh, some things have happened since then that I want to talk about. I hope we talk about uh, a little bit about this season, a little bit about um, Ireland uh, with team USA and uh, yeah, man, how's that sound? That sounds great. Let's do it. Uh, let's start with uh, let's start with Ireland. Um, talk to me a little bit about that experience. So you went over there, played with the uh, the under twenty one team um, as the goalie, obviously. And yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear just at a high level, kind of what that what that meant to you to play for Team USA. Yeah, so it was it was an incredible experience overall. Um, it's everything I could have ever expected to be in more. And I think that the fact that it got pushed back, it got got pushed back two years because of the. Uh, the um the pandemic and and there is some you know complications and some uncertainty with you know what was what was that going to look like with you know with all the testing and things so they had to push it back two times and I think that I can certainly speak for myself and I, th I think I can speak for all the other guys in the team that you know the, the fact that it got pushed back two times and the adversity we had to deal with that or mm -hmm. through that um made the win even more even sweeter um but the experience overall was incredible um we weren't really sure like what to expect going into it as far as you know what it was going to look like as far as interacting with the other teams, because I had heard that you know each tournament kind of brought different experiences with that. Because mm -hmm. I think that the uh, the one that was the tournament before the one that I was in was they were in like hotels and they didn't really get to interact with the other other countries. And ours was the complete opposite. We were in villages and townhomes, and we were right next to kids from you know other countries that frankly I would have never probably would have never crossed paths with, paths with in my life. But I was able to spend you know a week and a half with them and get to you know learn from them and. Um, just talk to them and, and get to, you know, learn about different parts of the world. So it was an incredible experience overall. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so questions on that. Did you meet goalies from other countries? Yes, I did. So we were next door to the Japanese kids and they were, they were awesome. They, they were really, it was, it was kind of cool just to be able to feel you could pay it forward a little bit to, to other people and kind of yeah. just teach them, you know, simple things like technique wise and stance wise. And um, they were, you know, very, um, interested in what we had to say and it was it was definitely rewarding and it was one thing that I never even like really realized that they like followed college across in America I don't know I just feel like I don't know I just feel because like the time zones or whatever it is like it'd be hard for them to keep track of everything because you know it's um you know it just feels like we're so far away from them but sure. they were you know they 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 kind of knew uh who we were which was was a really cool and pretty rewarding as well just being able to you know know that you have you're able to have an impact on people so far away but um yeah, I mean, we were we were close to them. Um, trying to think of some other teams, the, the Kenyan kids, the Ugandan kids. Uh, they were all awesome. We were able to. I think yeah. it was. I want to say it was the team Uganda. We were able to witness their first goal in any like international match ever or competitive international match ever. So that was really rewarding. Um, yeah, really, I really there's nothing nothing bad I could say about the entire tournament. It was an, it was an incredible experience, and yeah, it was also you know on top of that being able to meet some goalies from other countries was yeah. uh, was great as well. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I, I remember posting a, like a save this Japanese goalie made like just on my story because I saw it and I was like, wow, that was incredible. And then he yeah. replied back, um, you know, pretty broken English, but he replied back like, man, we love <laughs> you out here, you know? And I was just like, oh, man, that's so yeah. cool that, you know, you, you, you know, you got that reach and, and you know, you as a, as a college goalie kind of playing on the biggest stage, at least in the college game anyways, um, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible. So that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, talk to me though about playing, um, you know, with the new team. Uh, I think we talked about this a little bit. By the way, first podcast goes through your whole your whole story, kind of learn the position, the famous triple save that set you up for success. Yeah. <laughs> maybe got you into Notre Dame. Who knows? Yeah. But um, anyway, go back and listen to that. We're going to talk about uh, Ireland right now. But anyway, playing with a new team, right? Did you guys get to practice? Like, how did how did you get build the chemistry there? So, I mean, again, it got pushed back two years. So it was a little bit different from, I think, pre previous experience or previous uh, tournaments. Um, we had going back to my freshman year. I'm sorry, going back to my my summer after my senior year, we had tryouts, um, two rounds of those. Then we had a training camp fall of my freshman year of college. Um, another training camp in the winter because, you know, at this time we're supposed to be playing after my freshman year. Uh, which kind right. of sounds crazy to look which back would be at 2020 it, exactly right, right, 2020 yeah. right, and then right. you know kind of the world fell apart um a few months after that uh got pushed back two two more times and i think we might have had one training camp in between um that that original 2021 and then when we eventually went um then we had a training camp 
in um, July, like a month before we went to the tournament. And then, and then it was just, you know, a few practices, a few light practices when we got there. Yeah. And then it was pretty much, you know, hit the ground running with games. Um, and our first game was versus Canada. So there was no real like warm up stage as far as competing <laughs> against other teams that we were, you know, I mean, that that's obviously, you know, there's no secret. That's the team that we're there to play. Um, and, and we played them right away. But as far as being on a new team, there's definitely, that it was definitely interesting. I think that one thing that I found personally was the, the, the just the lingo was a little bit different as far as like the, the defensive schemes. Like I can't think of it exactly, but I think it, you know, nerd aim, my call for when the ball's down off of like a rebound, a save was the same call as when I'm supposed to be calling in the slide. So that was a little bit, a little bit of like a, uh, of an adjustment and some growing pains there. Um, just because, you know, obviously you can't mess up that terminology, especially when you're playing kids that are, you know, very talented, like the Canadian kids and the, right. um, the Haudenosaunee kids. So uh, there, you know, that was definitely one um, interesting aspect of it, but overall it was incredible. I mean, you know, being able to, just be on a team with some of these guys. And also, like I said, the, the uh, living situation, we were in townhomes and, and it was all mixed. It wasn't like, you know, you're just with the guys that you go to college with. I was with, you know, I was with um, Brennan O'Neill, who is, you know, one of my arch rivals in the, at the collegiate level. Sure. So that was really cool to be able to, you know, get, just get to know him and, um, and, and hang out with him and, and get to know him as a person instead of just, you know, facing, staring down his shots in, uh, you know, on the collegiate <laughs> level. And yeah, it was with me. I was with him, um, the Denver Fogel, Alex Dathakis, um, Quentin Matsui, who's the, uh, Virginia, Virginia defenseman. Um, so that's another guy that, you know, if I didn't, you know, we weren't on that team together, we would have, you know, never really known each other as friends. And then Mike Alexander, who's a defenseman at Yale. So, that was my house and there were like five groupings of those houses um Man, cool. yeah it, it was incredible overall i mean we got to, i got to know some great people um and compete on you know really on a really big stage and also i feel like be able to you know make an impact on some other people's lives as far as you know paying paying it forward with some some knowledge so yeah just great overall yeah um well, real quickly i was thinking about what the term was that i used when i gave up a rebound and i would just say ball i would yell ball what what do you guys say mine's fire yeah fire. Mine's, my, fire. for for Notre Dame, it's fire i think for for the for 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 usa it's it was slide fire was slide so right, definitely right. i've heard very, that before you know definitely can't definitely can't mess those up because those are two very different uh sure sure or, you know meanings yeah and did you uh you know ch like spending so much time with those shooters uh you know not seeing their shots just kind of chatting did you guys talk lacrosse and shooting or, or is it just kind of like getting to know each other and talking about life? I mean, we were playing enough lacrosse. Honestly, I think that we, we kind of had to turn the lacrosse switch off when we were off the field. That was one thing that I wasn't, again, I wasn't really sure what it was going to be like before we got there. And, you know, we found out pretty quickly that when we got there, it was just, it was, you know, it was pedal to the metal for 12 days. I mean, it was, it was yeah. lacrosse from sunup to sundown and you know, that, that's what we're there for. So by no means am I like complaining about that, but when we were off the field that we kind of like, you know, kicked our legs up because recovery was also pretty important because we were playing like seven games in 12 days. Right. So recovery piece was very big. So we were just like, at the end of the day, we were just like, you know, sit on the couch and watch a movie or just talk about random stuff. It didn't, we didn't really talk about like, you know, like our, you know, I didn't talk about with like with Quentin or Brennan, like, Oh, like this game last year was crazy or anything like that. We just kind of talked about different, you know, non lacrosse related stuff for the most part. Yeah, totally. Totally. Love it. Um, yeah. The other thing that was, uh, Interesting. I talked to uh, Travis Redbeard. He's like a box goalie and played for Team Slovenia. And he went to the World Championships with that team. And he was just talking about how much he learned at the tournament, like just by like interacting with all of these goalies. And it's kind of what you're talking about here, where like you're getting the best of the of the world U21, but still there's a lot of education that goes on within that tournament, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Love it, man. Absolutely. Love it. Um, well, cool. I'm going to head down to the world games in San Diego this summer. So, uh, oh, sweet. should get it, should get a little taste of that. Um, yeah, that's should awesome. be fun. And then, um, talk to me about playing with, uh, with the other goalie, Jared. That was great. I mean, he and I had, you know, like, again, going back to the whole thing where it was two years delayed. So he and I were, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, we were selected it basically selected as the two goalies, assuming that, you know, our, our, our level of play didn't drop off over the, over the, over the, you know, coming two years we were yeah. selected as the two goalies in 2020 and it stayed that way into you know through 2022 and he was um he was you know a great teammate to have um again another guy that I probably would have never you know gotten to know really well if it wasn't for this team so um just overall it was awesome and he and he's you know he's an incredible goalie and yeah um you know just being able to play against different teams with with um 
with another, you know, great goalie by my side was awesome. And, and he was, he was, you know, he was very supportive of me um, in, you know, in the, in the um, Canada games and a true testament of, you know, what it takes to be a great team. And, 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 and more, you know, not just him, some other guys that, you know, were not, didn't, you know, had maybe had different roles than they yeah. had on their, on their regular team. Right. Um, and there was no complaining. There was no, you know, hanging of their head. It was just, it was just full buy-in from all, whatever it was, 22 or 23 guys. And, you know, I truly feel, I feel like that that's, you know, the reason why we won, we're able to win the gold medals because the buy-in level from everyone, regardless of what their, you know, role was, everyone adapted to it and bought in completely. So it was, um, you know, it was a great, it was a great experience overall, but yeah, but playing with Jared was great. Yeah. I got to get him on the show. Uh, we've yeah, been trying, sure. we were trying he, to make yeah. it happen for a while, but he, yeah, so, he's, 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 he's one of those Ivy league guys, you know, so it's tough to, it's tough, tough, tough to, to get down free down time. With, uh, yeah, to exactly. Nail down yeah, those Ivy sure he's league got, guys. he's got, yeah, he's got a busy <laughs> schedule too. Um, yeah, awesome. Absolutely. I was going to ask, you know, when it comes to like team defense with, you know, team USA, it's not like Notre Dame where like, you know, you're with these guys every single day, you're putting in some really complex defensive schemes. You got like really, you know, is it more just like, Hey, when the ball's up top, we're going to slide from the crease. When it comes from X, we're going to coma slide. Is that kind of like the basic strategy? Is there something else going on there? Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what it was. I mean, it was, uh, I, I mean, it's been, you know, seven or eight months. So the, 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 the exact calls are kind of escaping me a little bit, but, sure. um, but yeah, it was basically like if they're dodging from, a, you know, if there's a guy on the crease, we're going to slide from, you know, the crease. And right. then if not, if it's an open set, we're going to rotate to it. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, that one of the things is that, you know, it, it, we, like I said, we don't, or like you said, we don't have a lot of time together as much, nearly as much as, you know, the, the collegiate teams do with the entire fall, the entire preseason. So you kind of have to, in a weird way, like you have to compensate with that, with that by not overcomplicating anything you know it's not like you throw more schemes in you just you just say okay like we're you know we're on this team for a reason we're talented we, we have good communication skills just you know play lacrosse how you've been playing it your whole life and um you know go from there so uh yeah it, it was definitely definitely a bit of an adjustment i mean the 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 defense that i'm playing with right now we, we, we were kind of paired together since like late fall of of, of this past year um or with the usa team it was you know the the guy this starting line if you want to call it that i don't really even know I, honestly everyone because there was only four polls total so it doesn't really even matter if you were like on the top three roster uh, top three um defensive spots or not but right. you just you know you kind of had to adapt and just kind of communicate more um and just you know develop together throughout the tournament so that's awesome man well congratulations yeah. team usa brings home the gold uh um, thank you very much i appreciate yeah. that you got the medal or was it back back at home or something? It's at or home. It's okay. at home. I, I didn't really trust myself to uh, you know not misplace it somewhere in my my Smart. messy college house. So I was <laughs> I just I want my parents to just take it. Um, you know I didn't want I didn't want to run the risk of of That's opening smart. a drawer one day and it's not there because I put it in the uh, washer and dryer by accident. No, that's so. smart. I would not bring yeah. anything of value into the college house that I lived in. So yeah. uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what about, you know, the international game has a few uh, distinct rules, a little bit, you know, I'm going to say a little bit different than than college, right? I guess mostly no shot clock. It's kind of the big one. That's Is there, the was there any sure. any sort of like differences that that played into your goalie game or or not really? Oh, I mean, you could definitely be more patient on the clear. Um, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is no shot. Well, so there is no shot clock um, in general. And that also meant no shot clock getting over midfield line. So off of yeah. the save, you know, typically, you know, in, 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 in the college, if I'm making a clean save, the first way I'm first thing I'm looking at is up, obviously, because you want to you want to not only push transition, but you also want to, you know, not have any issues with running out of time on the 20 second clear clock. Right. When, it, when I'm sorry, in the uh, in the world games, if say I make a clean save and there's a pass that, you know, I'd probably throw in college or in, the you know, at the collegiate level maybe I'm a bit more hesitant because not only is it, you know, there's no clearing clock, but also say I throw a bad ball or the guy doesn't, you know, make a clean catch and I, we turn it over. There's no shot clock for the other team now. So they might hold on to the ball for another three minutes. Like when we played, I think we played Puerto Rico and they tied the game up at one and then they held the ball for, I think like literally like for five minutes. Yeah. Cause they, they just wanted to stall the time and get us tired, get our defense tired. And then it's been making it an attack when we were, you know, at our, at, at a weak point. Um, so that, that aspect of it was definitely different. Um, the, the level of speed of the speed of the, of, of the game was definitely a little bit slower, lower scoring games. I think the, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't remember the exact score, but I remember the first count of the game was like seven to five, which is like usually the score sometimes like at the end of like the first quarter in, yeah, in some right. games. So that that was definitely a little bit different. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, definitely definitely a little bit different with it, with the the rules overall. I guess a little better for us goalies because you're only getting scored on five times. It's only five yeah, times exactly. you got to mentally yeah. reset, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, reminds me when I played, cause when I played in 2003, there was no shot clock and, um, in the college level. And yeah, I mean, we, we beat a team like 18 to two, and then we played them next, the next week in the, in the first round of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they did the, exactly what you said with Puerto Rico. Like every time they got the ball, it was like five, six minute possessions. And, and I think we ended up winning by one, but it was way closer. Cause they just stalled the entire time. And it was so yeah. low scoring and that, um, yeah, I mean, it takes, it takes like some focus as a goalie, right? Cause sometimes like that back and forth action, I talked to PL sixes goalies and they're just like, so in the moment, kind of like basketball yeah. where you're running up and down the court, you're just so present in playing. And sometimes it takes a little bit more focus when it's slower, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, cool. And then did you get to see like Ireland at all? I mean, you, you're Notre Dame fighting Irish. That's got to be pretty cool to go over there, huh? We went on an off day. We went to the Cliffs of Moher, Uh, and that was pretty cool. I mean, that was like about 400, 500 feet above sea level, which was pretty crazy. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I mean, after, after we won the gold medal, we were able to, you know, kind of go out and be social a little bit more than we were the last the last 12 days sure um but yeah i mean we didn't we didn't see it's not like we went to like dublin or or um you know saw any like any like you know huge cities and we were you know we were there for a purpose and you know very you know thankfully we were able to achieve that purpose but um we didn't really necessarily go like sightseeing we had like one day yeah. of that but it wasn't yeah. you know we knew we knew and our, our our families knew what we were there for and it was to win a gold medal and um you know, and at, the, at that point, really nothing else was on our minds besides that. It's a business trip, baby. Yeah. It's a business trip. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And you guys took care of business. Well, cool. Thanks for, sure. for walking us through that. And yeah, and absolutely. Congrats again on the gold medal. Uh, Thank you, have, you. You have to send me, a, have your folks send me a pic. I'd love to, I'd love to take a look at that if, uh, yeah, if, absolutely. If, that, yeah, if we'll that's, if that's possible, that'd be cool. Yeah. I'll send it to you right when we wrap up for sure. All right. Sounds good. Um, cool. Let's talk about this season. Um, Notre Dame, man, you guys are playing well, <laughs> looking good. Um, I wanted to talk to you though, real quick about kind of the all American stuff, the, you know, the preseason rankings come out, your first team, all American. Do you, do you, do you buy into that? Do you pay attention to that? Or is it just like, Hey, whatever time to go out and prove what I need to do? Um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I mean, I saw it. I, it's not like I, you know, people were saying like, Oh, like, did you see the, the, you know, the preseason stuff? And I, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I, I have a, you know, I have a cell phone and I have social media, so I, I obviously saw it, but it's not something that I kind of let get to my head by any means. And even, even the, at the stuff that comes at the end of the season, I try not to let that to get to my, to my head either, because I really, it sounds cliche, but maybe it's cliche for a reason. You know, all that matters is the team success. And, um, you know, I mean, for example, you know, at the end of last year, I was, you know, I was, I was, I think honorable mention all American, but my team didn't even make the tournament. So if you had asked me, would I sacrifice my, all American status for my team to have a shot at the championship run, but you know, it's a no brainer for me to do that. Um, so I, I, yeah, I see it and I saw, you know, the preseason stuff and the mid season stuff, but to me, it's just, you know, I, I appreciate it's not like I'm trying to just like, you know, shoot it, you know, shove it off. But at the same time, I'm really, especially after what happened last year to our team, I, I'm, there's nothing else in my mind besides helping us win. And what I've found too, is that, you know, at the level that, that we're playing at and the teams that we're playing sometimes, Helping the team win means that you go 50% or you go 45%. And, you know, obviously I want to be more of a, you know, helping force and a hurting force to my team, obviously. But, you know, I just want to be able to say, I you know, I did my job and help the team, you know, win and do as best as it, as it, as it, as it could. Yeah. Um, whether that results in, you know, all American or anything, it's, you know, that to me is secondary to winning a championship. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it def- it's definitely a little bit different. I feel like it's a little bit unique because obviously, you know, there's kind of a direct correlation sometimes between how many saves I make, or I shouldn't say how many saves I make, how many goals I let in and how the team does. So there's obviously, I, I realize there, that correlation, but I try not to connect that to like all American status or all conference status or anything like that. I just, you know, yeah. want to let in as few goals as possible and make as many saves as possible for the sake of the win. And, you know, anything that comes with that is, you know, it's cool. It's, it's appreciated, but it's not like the first thing on my mind. Love it. That's a great point about, um, 
you know, just going out there and doing everything you can to give your team a chance to win. I think, I think a lot of goalies, especially youth, like feel like, all right, if I'm going to give my team a chance to win, I need to go 60%. I need to save 70%. And sometimes you, like you don't, right? You don't, yeah. like you said, maybe yeah. you just save four, maybe you save 30, but you make that like one save at the very end that, that yeah, gets agree, your team yeah. to win. So, you know, I love that goalies, you know, accept that pressure and accept that spotlight. And that's part of this position. But a lot of times we're just a little too hard on ourselves and like, you know, uh, just go yeah. out there and do everything you can give your team the chance to win. Right. For sure. And the thing is on top of that too, is, is, and again, why lacrosse is a team sport and why I don't really, you know, pay attention to the individual stuff is say, for example, I, you know, this actually, this happened a few weeks ago against Syracuse. I was below 50%. I was like, I think I had like 10 or 11 saves and let in 12 goals or something like just below 50. And then I was like, kind of like a little, you know, upset with myself after the game. Cause I was like, you know, like, I, I feel like I could have done more. And then I realized like they had like 21 shots on goal total, you know, yeah. like that, that, that's a testament to the defense that that's not me doing bad. It's just the, the, the defense held them to 20 shots on goal or whatever it was. And, you know, those were in, instead of them taking 30 shots on goal and some of them were mediocre, they took 20 really good shots on goal. And when, really good shooters have really good opportunities to sh take shots then you know some of them are going to go in you know and, and, but I, i'd rather i'd rather you know see us let you know have less shots on goal and i make less saves and we ultimately win the game than be able to say oh i made 17 saves and we lost like i don't really you know right. this, every, everything goes back to everything ties back to did we win or not and right. sometimes you have to, you have to have a career day in order to help your team win and pick up you know where other guys are kind of not performing as high in other days, you know, they pick you up. So it all, it all evens out. And that's truly why I feel like lacrosse is, you know, the ultimate team sport. Love it. Love it. You mentioned, you know, Notre Dame didn't make the playoffs last year. I imagine, you know, as you start this year, your team's playing with a chip on its shoulder. Um, are you guys, are you guys kind of fueled by that? Um, I would, I mean, I definitely think it's, it's in the back of all of our minds what happened last year. And I think the biggest aspect of that is leaving no doubt in anyone's mind you know we don't want it to be coming down to like you know one game where it's all oh, well are they better than them now even though that they you know they might have dropped a few games earlier in the season we just want to be able to say like here's our resume there isn't there is literally no doubt in our mind that this is you know the, you know everyone knows what we're capable of and um, I'm not saying we have I mean there's still plenty of work to do we have you know three more regular season games so by no means am I saying the work is over I'm just saying at the end of the at the end of the regular season, be able to, you know, metaphorically, you know, hand our resume to the selection committee and be like, you know, what seat are we not? Are we playing? Right. Basically. And, and you know, I, I think that so far we've done that. But like I just said, we have, you know, we have North Carolina twice and UVA in between the two North Carolina games on the rest of our schedule. And those are three, you know, heavyweight matchups um, and three rivalry games. So there's, you know, there's no complacency here in South Bend. We're, you know, we're, 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 you know, still plugging along and, you know, trying to win, trying to win out in these last three games and just try to be, you know, the best that we can be every day. Yeah. Love it. Well, you guys are playing well, you're playing really well. Um, I mean, like you said, at the time of we're recording this eight, you know, just one blemish on the, on the record, eight and one against UVA, who's, you know, top two, top three team yeah. right now as well. Uh, great, great squad. So, uh, you know, congrats on that. Thank is you. there, you know, is there something better you guys are doing as a unit this year? What, what do you think, what do you, to what do you attribute the eight and one record, the success you've had so far? Um, I, mean, I think, I mean, it starts off, we just have a, a pretty talented roster and, and that, and that, you know, in my eyes, and I think the eyes of everyone on this team is not like the 15 guys that play on Saturdays. We've had full buy-in from every single guy on our team, which I think is, is really good to see. And, um, we really believe that, you know, we're, we're, we're going to go as far as the last guy on our depth chart takes us. And we really, we really, truly believe that, um, you know, go, like I said, it's team sport for a reason. Um, and the, you know, the unfortunate reality of, of, of sports and college sports is that not everyone gets to play, but you know, everyone's value in the locker room is the same, regardless of whether you're a starter, you're an all American, you're this, you're that, or you're a guy that hasn't really played that much. Um, we've had incredible buy-in from the guys that are on our, our on our, uh, like our scout team, if you want to, you know, call it that. Yeah. Um, and, and they, you know, there've been, there've been plenty of times where, you know, they've given us, given me and, and the defense, um, you know, harder, harder time than, than we have on game day. And that's what you want to see, you know, you, you want to be pressured or you want to be 
kind of press to, to your limits on during the week and 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 be be able to ready to go, be ready to go on Saturday. Um, so again, it sounds cliche to say, and I'm, 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 but it's really, really like a mantra that we're trying to live by this year is that it, it is a full bind from everybody. Um, and not that we haven't had that in the past, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to like take a, you know, jab at prior years. Cause every, we've had an incredible group of guys in the locker room every year, but I just think that we realize that that is an especially important aspect of, of our, of our culture that we need to build this year. Like, for example, one guy I wanted to, you know, I, uh, I think is, Deserving of being pointed out is is, is Max Maniac, um, who's one of my best friends on the team. I live with him, live with him for the last three three years, I think. Um, he has has da- he's battled with some injury, and he has not been able to even dress until this year because of his his knee injuries. And he was voted captain this year, and I think that is a real testament to what he's all about, and more importantly, what our team's all about. Where it doesn't matter how many points you have, how many games you've played, and how many games you even dress for. If you're a guy that comes in every day and gives it your all for the locker room or for the guys in the locker room, that that's that's our gauge of what leadership is. And um, you know, he, I think, being a, a captain on being a having a guy that's captain on on the scout team pushes everybody else and says like, hey, he's he's working his his butt off. Like, why can't I? And um, he sets a great example. And um, and I think that you know, Max's Max's uh, his work ethic has really trickled down to every single guy on this team. So. Love it. That, that's that's my kind of a long answer to a short question, but no, that, that's all good. All it's perfect answer. I I um I think those guys like Max are so important for lacrosse teams. I remember we had a guy on our team. You know, I'm talking about the guy who's like, I maybe Max is a great player, but I'm me personally. I'm talking about the guy who's not the best player, right? Not the best player, uh, but just brings every single day the effort, the energy, the attitude of a great teammate. Is always like pumping everyone up. And those are those are really important guys to have on the team. Like I said, you're not going to look in the stat book and find you know their name just right at the top, but like those are real important role players, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. We re- we really truly believe that, and I think you know one thing we're doing this year is the teammate of the week, um, and we're doing that. It's not the player of the week. It's not who had the most goals. It's who's the guy that you know gave his put his best foot forward and practice in the weight room and film if you want you know anything just you know yeah we want we want to be able to highlight guys that maybe don't get recognized on saturdays and sundays but are you know putting out for the team every single day that's cool have you been teammate of the week one week um i think i got it like a few weeks ago what'd you do Uh, what'd you do that week talk to me about that week I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I try just to go to go about my business like you know basically what i've been saying to you just like not really caring about my personal stuff to just like be appreciative of everybody. Um, not really, you know, I, I don't, I don't look at a guy and say, Oh, you're this color Jersey, you're this color Jersey, you're a scout guy, you're a starter. Like if you, if you, if you, if you work hard for this team, then, you know, I'll respect you. And if, and if not, and thankfully we don't have any guys that don't, but if not, then there's, you know, there's an issue. And um, I think that, you know, I think that, Again, like there, we have a lot of guys like that, and it's not just me saying like, "Oh, I'm look at me, I'm a you know a good teammate." There's 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 a ton of guys. There's every single guy in this locker room is, is a great teammate. So, um, yeah, there's there's just it's hard, it's hard, it is hard, honestly, to, to single out like one guy to be the teammate of the week or whatever it is because sure. we have so many guys. But yeah, I think it's a really nice tradition. I hope that you know the seniors for years to come keep it going. Love it. Talk to me about your uh, goalie game. Uh, this year is there is there something you've switched up that's working really well is there like a focus that you're um that you've really brought into this season or is it just you know playing my game how I know how to play it uh I mean as I've progressed I think I might have talked about it a little bit in the last podcast but I've been really trying to stay even keeled um and that's gone from being kind of just like an overall mentality to really trying to get into the, to the specifics of that. So one thing that I think is worth noting or worth sharing is um, the breathing I do during the game, like deep when the ball is at the, at the other end and I'm, I have nothing else to do. I do, you know, deep breaths in, um, hold it and big, big exhale. Um, and that, that is called like box breathing. And that's what I think. I, I mean, I read it somewhere, but that's what guys like in the military do in high pressure situations. And, Look, I'll be the first one to say that, you know, being a lacrosse goalie is not as intense as, you know, entering a compound or something. So it's all relative. I'm not trying to compare what I do to, you know, being a being a service member. But, um, you know, I, I try to do that. Um, keeps my heart rate down, keeps me calm. And then whenever, you know, even if it's a crazy, you know, Kavanaugh or crazy Jake Taylor goal, I try to not celebrate 
it, even though I'm obviously very happy for them, but I try to keep, you know, keep the heart rate down, keep the emotions down um, as much as I can, obviously, you know, here and there, there's, you know, you know, there's a moment of excitement, obviously, you, you know, we're all human, but I try to keep to be very, very even keeled because I found that, um, you know, if I, if I ride the highs too high or I ride the, ride the lows too low, then I kind of get off base and like building off of everything I just said, like if, if I'm, if, if, if we're playing a really good team and I'm going like 50%, I can't let a few goals in a row shake me because I got to make the next few saves to, uh, you know, make up for that. So I would say that. And I also say, as I've gotten, I mean, it's all, sometimes people laugh at me when I say I've gotten older because I'm 22 years old and I'm talking, sometimes I'm, t- I'm telling people that like that are 40 years old or 50 years old that I'm like old, but I definitely have found that my, um, hips and knees and hammies are starting to get a little tight if I don't really like really try to stretch them out. Um, and do some recovery things. I got, we have this like really nice recovery room with like Norma Tex and, and foam rollers. So I try to go in there once or twice a week for like a 45 minute session of just stretching, um, rolling, you know, rolling out tight muscles. And that's something that I pretty much have to do now. Uh, I can't just show up to practice with, with, you know, just come straight out of the locker room and throw my gear on and be able to expect to perform at a high level. Um, just because, you know, the wear and tear that's that, that my body's had over the last few years um so i'd say that the two things would be recovery and just the breathing techniques would be my best my best pieces of advice you're an old man now liam it certainly feels that way i think i got old the hips of like an 80 year old man or something like that yeah uh yeah, to that point but... to that point so i had this like a uh, mobility special hip specialist in my, my last yeah. goalie summit and mm-hmm. i've been going through his program his hip program i feel yeah. amazing i feel amazing i'm, I'm, I'm like 100 convinced <laughs> I'll, i'm gonna send it to you yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, I'm 100 percent convinced that like if you're gonna train your body physically to be great as a lacrosse goalie, it's hip strength and mobility. Cause like yeah, you know, you're in that, like you're in your stance, right? And what you know, what drives you out of that, you know, either direction with explosion, it's hips. Um yeah. and so important. So exactly. I'll send I'll send you yeah. the program. Yeah. What I found too is that I think that at first I was a little concerned at the beginning of the year, like, yikes, am I gonna be able to move as well as I did last year, two years ago. What I've kind of found is that the more I do this stretching and stuff, I've actually, I feel like I'm moving better than I ever have. Like the more, yeah. cause I've put more attention to it and I probably almost like, um, over, not over stretch, but you know, it kind of really made up for it. And even, you know, maybe more so than that. Um, so I think I'm, you know, I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but I feel like this, you know, I feel like my movements have been really good this year and some of the best, best mobility that I've had ever. Yeah, they have, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, so, all right, PCAV scores a goal up top corner. You're not doing the, you know, bend down and swipe the turf. Type yeah, I, down there, I, I, I got, I mean, I'm happy for him. He's obviously, it's great for him. Great for the team. <laughs> I got, I, I'm just trying really to stay even killed this year. Right. Um, It's all about, to me, it's just all about the poise and, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm the happiest guy in the locker room after a win. Um, So I, I, you know, I take all the emotion out there and the rest of the day, but um, when it's, you know, when you're between the lines, you, you got to stay really poised, really, really even killed. Good on you, man. Um, could I share my screen? Can we talk about, uh, a couple plays I got? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Um, I should have downloaded this, but this is a play against Maryland. Um, it mm-hmm. just is from, uh, Evan who who's on team lax goalie, right? Kind of talk to me about the arc play. It's so, it's so intriguing, right? I don't know if we talked about this last time, but you know, you're a very low arc guy. And then right at that last second in this play, you know, when, when it gets low angle, boom, you pop out. Talk to me a little bit about that, about that technique. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things where the guy's a yard away and I'm realistically not going to be able to necessarily, you know, make a save off of like seeing the ball, like the whole thing, seeing the ball and seeing it into your stick. So I, the reason, part of the reason why I play a little arc is, I mean, this, you know, again, I'm not giving away like a secret. It's just to maximize my time of or my reaction time. You know, if, if, if I'm a yard uh yard lower than some other guys and maybe that's just a split second more than i have to react when you get down to the to the closer shots the ones that are kind of the dunks on the crease then you really have to in my eyes at least really step out and challenge them and take as much surface area of the goal as you can or take it take as much surface area away as you can um and i think you know i did that you know did that pretty well here and i think what happened was he might have just like caught the ball and turned and i kind of was already kind of right in his grill and i think he kind of just took a shot before really even thinking about it. Um, so I think that, you know, but that's not, it, the thing it's I find interesting is that that's not something that I like specifically aim to do. 
Um, I kind of just try to play really instinctually and sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, you know, there, there've been a handful of times where I come out and challenge the guy and there've been other times where I don't. And I don't think there's like one like right or wrong way to do it. You know, I, that's one thing I really try to emphasize when, when I'm coaching younger guys or talking to other goalies is like, you know, there's, I feel like there's no two identical shots. There's no two identical situations. So with that being said, you can't have an identical reaction to those two shots. Um, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's, it's really just a matter of if I'm feeling like in this moment, we'll, we'll come out and challenge the guy be a good thing or not. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, I feel like, you know, here it was able to, you know, work out pretty well. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a great point. Yeah. That's a great point about, um, no, there's no two identical shots and it is a yeah. feeling thing. Um, and a lot of times too, what I like about the coming out too, is like, this guy's, he's not looking at you, right? He's especially in this play. Cause the pass is kind of errant, right? So he's like totally focused on catching this ball. And then when he turns yeah. around, like he's, like you said, he's probably already made, but it made up his mind. He's going to shoot low and you're right there in his face. It's almost like you yeah. surprise him like, Oh, Whoa, crap. Like he's right there to make that stuff. So yeah, I do like that play, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of goalies, um, you know, about this kind of arc play and the, I, that instinct is something they mentioned quite a bit um what a save this is this is this is incredible this is like a good um let's watch it again this is like a i don't know how far it's like five and five almost just yeah. steps into it bam talk to me about that one if you remember that one yeah this one sometimes the games are kind of a blur but th this one i kind of kind of remember you know again turning into him and seeing him and thinking like all right one of those things like what do i have to lose type of type of type of situations <laughs> like you know this is you know selfishly this is not going to be a soft goal whether it goes in or not so mm -hmm. you might as well kind of make a move and try to throw the guy off a little bit but again this is a similar situation to if i feel like i have the opportunity to step out and challenge him challenge him then i will and if not then i'm not going to um and in this yeah. case, you just kind of felt like, all right, if I stay on my low arc, he just has way too much, way too much goal to shoot at. So way I'm going to come out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is too here, and this, again, this goes back to not caring about how many saves I have. Maybe if I step out, you know, further, he's trying to really put it in a corner and he shoots wide and that's, yeah. that's fine. I'd rather be, you know, I'd, I'd much rather it go wide than go in the goal even if that results in me having less save totals. So, sure. you know, again, that, that's, that's what it all comes down to is just making sure the ball does not go in the goal, regardless of what that means, you know, whether it's a save or a pipe or wide. Yep. Um, let's take a look at just this last save here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's so cool. That's, that's um, oh, the shot clock one. Yeah. Yeah. I, talk to me about this play. Um. Yeah, so this one, I mean, yeah, looking back at it, that might have been even a little aggressive, even looking back at no, it. No, I like it. I like it. I mean, you, the shot clocks, you know he's got to shoot, right? Like, do, do you as a goalie yeah. have the shot clock in mind? Yeah, I have a kind of like a mental I, – I don't really – it's one of those things like whenever there, whenever there's a spare moment or there's not like a moment of pressure, I kind of just take a quick glance up and see what, see what the time is. And obviously when, when you know, when we're talking about like, you know, probably – less than 10 seconds i'm kind of playing it out in my head you know five, 10 9 8 7 whatever so yeah i think i definitely had an idea of that and you know i think that was able to challenge him make him you know kind of second guess that shot um right and yeah. that doesn't go i mean going back to our our theme of the conversation i mean that doesn't go in your book as a save but like might as well be right like right. I mean, he, you yeah. stepped out like he had nothing to shoot at then and it's a turnover for some wide yeah yeah I mean, I will say that, I mean, look, there's, there's, a, there's a, you know, for everything I do, there's, there's a, you know, potential counteraction to it. If I do go out and he puts it to a spot where my body's not, I have very little time to react. So I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, it, it's hard to, it's honestly hard to become the spokesperson for any move or any strategy, because there's obviously going to be, you know, going to be great shooters that put them in spots where you're not. It's just yeah. at this point, again, it's the guys at what, like two yards away. It's it's a matter of like, all right, like what can I do to kind of get in this guy's head, mess him up a little bit, change his plan up a little bit. And, um, you know, I thought, I was, I, you know, I guess I was able to do that here. But again, it's it's all it's all it's all just kind of a feel. It's it's not like it's not like a, like an if then statement of like if he's at two yards, I'll step out. It's just I kind of just really try to read the play, read the read the body language and read the shooter and um, make a decision kind of yeah. kind of subconsciously. It's again, it's not really something that I have to like decide on doing it just kind of happened 
you develop that with your with your years of experience. And now that you're yeah. the old man, you got it, man. You got that's, the experience. Yeah, that's one. That's one perk of being being <laughs> one of the uh, old hair old heads. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I got to talk about this play, of course, huh? Uh, it's kind of cool that it's a lot a of goalies have gone viral for saves uh, this season. But man, that is, I gotta say, that is one of the best saves I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of like double saves, right? Burnlore had yeah. one in the championship. Yeah. Tillman Johnson had one, but this one, like, you know. The guy goes to, he fakes, right? Fakes away, you go for it, and then come back over the top and make that save. Uh, talk to me about that, if you could. Was it luck, or it's, you, you kind of saw him coming back, right? Um, I think I, you know, I think I realized that he he had pumped it um, and was able to kind of go back and grab it. I mean, it was, it was definitely crazy because it, it was one of those things, again, going back to what I was saying about just being even keeled, like, they're blasting their goal horn. That was, there was one of the largest crowd. I think probably the largest crowd I've ever played in front of. It's probably like 6,000, 7,000 people there. Wow. Um, so I was like, holy, you know, I was like, wow. Like, I, I I was a little bit surprised I was able to grab it, but I was able to kind of look up and, and hit hit a D-Mitty that was breaking out and, and, and was able to, you know, connect with him and he ran down and scored. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that if I kind of let that big save get to my head, then maybe I wouldn't have cleared the ball efficiently and, um, didn't go to, you know, didn't lead to a goal at the other end, but I mean, yeah, I, I was, I was pretty happy about this one. I mean, it's one of those saves that, you know, it's one of those saves that frankly, you kind of just kind of dream of making like one of those like big saves in the, in the big moment. And, you know, I was really, really thankful for it. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It, it, it was really one of those, just like it happened in a split second. It's, you know, looking back at it on slow-mo, it's like, oh, like, did you, you know, did you, did you see him shoot or not or not? I honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't really remember it. Like, it's one of those <laughs> things, like one of those, one of those like moments where you kind of just black out and just go, rely on the, you know, the instincts that, you know, I've developed from whatever it's been like 18 years of playing a goalie and, um, you know, was able to make the save and, and, and hope, you know, kind of led to a, you know, a run that we were able, able to go on, but. Love definitely it. one that I, you know, without sounding like, you know, too cocky, I think that I'll be able to, you know, look back on that one and be, you know, be really happy about it. It's one of those, I think that one of those saves that I really proud of in my career, just because I was in a big moment and was able to help, you know, like I said, sometimes the defense bails me out and other times, you know, there's, there's a few chances here and there where I'm able to, you know, help them, give them a helping hand. And I feel like I was able to do that here and help the, help the team go on a run. So definitely yeah. one that I uh, will look back at and smile for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you look at the the moment of the game, right? Fourth quarter, you guys are down by one yeah. uh, on the road, right? With all the, you know, crowd noise and they're getting into it. So it's a huge, you know, huge momentum yeah. shift. So yeah. Awesome, man. Well, cool. Thank you for for going through that. That was tons of fun. Yeah. Um, one a couple more quick questions. So you guys got three games left. Um, are you the kind of goalie that wants to know you got Notre Dame coming up or uh, not Notre Dame? You got UNC coming up, right? Are you do you go through like all the shooters' tendencies? Um, or no. do you just, you just kind of, you don't want to know all that gets in your head. There's like a glaring, 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 glaring tendency that I will, you know, look at it, but you know, with modern day, you know, these shooters are, are incredible. And yeah, you know, um, there have been definitely times where I kind of I'm like, oh, he's going to put it here and I'm completely wrong. I kind of look, makes me look like, you know, I'm completely, you know, what am I doing? Um, I really just try to react and just see the ball into my stick and, uh, I, I think that, you know, part of, part of the whole breathing thing and the whole even keel thing is having a clear mind and not like, oh, lefty shooter, low to high or righty shooter, high, high to low or bouncer or whatever it is. And like I said, every single shot is different. So even if there's a guy with, you know, a certain tendency that it's not going to be an identical shot, you know, maybe there's a screen ball, maybe there's, you know, I mean, different terrain, um, whether, you know, as far as like turf or grass, rainy day, sunny day everything comes into it, you know, it, it really just comes down to seeing the ball out of the guy's stick and making a move towards it. So that's something I, I, I used to do is like, I really like try to watch film on guys and, and look at how they shoot. And I realized it just, I think that I'm at my best when I'm, when I'm, my, my mind is completely blank and I can kind of enter that flow state and, and enter that zone. And uh, I think that the best way to go about that is by not thinking at all and just reacting. Love it. Well, cool, man. Uh, good luck in the in the upcoming uh, rest of the season, the playoff run. Uh, keep up the great work. 
I'm I'm really glad to see you. You got you still got the anti swag swag going on. Yeah, you're, you're nah, the, you're I got I got I got to stick with the sweatpants. Yeah, I I gotta I don't know. I'm just I'm a superstitious guy. It's getting really hot out. It's about, I mean, even even for <laughs> South Bend, it's getting pretty hot out. But I just I just know myself. If I go into a game and I don't wear the sweatpants and I don't have a good day, I'm going to be an absolute head case about it. So I got I got to stick with it. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, you got one more season left after this. Are you going to come back for another yes, year? Sir. Yes, right. sir. So I uh, I got I got um one more year left i'm doing uh we kind of got an exciting few months ahead of me i got we got the uh the uh you know the playoffs and everything that comes with that or you know you know obviously still got work to do there but you know hopefully make the playoffs and yeah you know have you know deep run obviously the goal is memorial day um and then our team's going on an international trip we do every four years uh so we're going to germany so that's, that should be pretty fun and then pretty much come right back to south and start my master's program it's like a one-year accelerated program um, the Notre Dame's got a handful of those. I think, you know, there's a good amount of athletes that try to come back and do grad years. So they do, they do like a one year accelerator program. So we're not just, you know, staying around afterwards, like doing a two year, th two or three year program, but only play, be able to play for one year. So yeah, so I'm coming back um, to be here in the summer and then, uh, and then it's back to the grind in the fall. So I'm, I'm really excited for it though. Love it, man. Well, let's talk more about a, a Lax Goli Rat sponsorship. I we we tried to make it happen a couple of times, hadn't yeah. hadn't worked out, but I'd love to uh, work with you this summer if we could. That sounds great. I'll, I'll have uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a nice nice turf field to do some demos on and stuff. So that, that sounds like a plan. All right, my man. Good luck, right, Liam. Great. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. And um, I always ask if you want to leave the goalies with a final piece of advice. What would that be? Um. Dang, I don't know. One one piece of advice. Even Keel. Come on, that's the theme I of the probably, show. Actually, that's probably yeah. I probably I probably leave you guys with that one. I think that that's the you know obviously there's different goalies with different different levels of emotion, but I think that you know just being able to just be stay poised and stay dialed through everything is is when is when I'm personally at my best, and I think that that goes for a lot of other people. So that's probably that's probably my last piece of advice. All right, man. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate Take your up. time.